there, guys. I'm uh, Rehan uh, Lal. I'm a physician over here at Stanford. I do adult and pediatric endocrinology. In a former life, I was an electrical engineer and computer scientist. Um, I have had diabetes myself for several decades, and I decided to switch over from engineering into medicine uh, when my two younger sisters also developed type 1 diabetes. The three components of a uh, artificial pancreas system are pump, sensor, and an algorithm. And the algorithm can be uh, developed uh, by anyone. We have a group, a community, who um, has decided that they would like to try their hand at writing the algorithm that decides how to deliver the insulin based on the sensor data. And so the do-it-yourself community um, puts the software online um, on websites like GitHub, which allow you to share uh, open source software, and then other people can get it, they can make changes, and eventually those changes can be rapidly iterated over. Um, and so you get rapid changes in the software, um, while at the same time, uh, it's usable for the folks who are developing the software. And usually that is uh, a lot of us who have diabetes. Um, so what people do is they will download this software and put it on a microcontroller. That could be their phone's processor. That could be uh, a separate system on a chip, um, like a Raspberry Pi, for example, or an Intel Edison. Those commands run on that system. And basically, they receive um, glucose data in some form. It can either come from online sources, if that microprocessor is con connected to the internet, which most are these days, um, or it can come in via Bluetooth is another option. And then it sends out uh, a radio signal to the pump. And if the pump is open, then they can just send those commands uh, via whatever frequency that pump communicates on, or they can, um, some of the pumps uh, developed in Korea by soil, for example, can receive Bluetooth commands, and in which case then you can just send the commands over Bluetooth with, which again, a lot of these microprocessors have on board anyway. So I think a lot of these commercial devices um, are systems that are thoroughly tested. They have to go through the FDA. And so that does uh, add some delays into the whole process. And when things go through the FDA, they are obligated to look out for the safety of the users. Um, and sometimes that can create hurdles in using the system. So for example, um, except in terms of accessibility, uh, you might have to go through a series of button presses to be able to issue a command before it will allow you to go through, which adds to the number of steps it takes to interact with your devices. Um, the, other, the other issue is that they have to set certain safety limits. So for example, uh, you may not want to let the person's blood sugar hover in the double uh, in in the double digits because uh, and that's in milligrams per deciliter um, because potentially the closer you are to a hypoglycemia event, um, the more dangerous that system may may be perceived. So people like the idea of customizability. Um, a lot of folks. Uh, if they have the program running on their phone, people do have lots of interactions with their phones these days. So that's another usability standpoint. People are accustomed to seeing others pull out their phone during a meal. Um, so it, it, it blends in more with one's uh, normal daily uh, activities. And because it's customizable and because you can edit the code, if you don't like an element of the interface, it can be changed. Um, if, uh, if the community as a whole says, 
you know, this can make the system more usable, it's done. Whereas if that were the case uh, with a commercial product, every release cycle requires this, uh, an additional vetting process. And, and that does slow things down um, in terms of development. And if you have to buy a new product because there was a simple change in the algorithm, for example, then that's also a lot of, um, a lot of waste as well. For patients who are interested in do-it-yourself artificial pancreas technology, I think it's very important that providers do be supportive um, because oftentimes if you don't provide the care for them, they will seek it out elsewhere and you want them to have someone who's aware of the risks and benefits. Um, unlike FDA-approved systems, these are constantly changing and we would like our patients to be aware of risks and benefits, and we would like to provide care for all our patients. I think that um, you know you have to understand that any software that is uh, developed by a community um, and is released um, with with a little bit of testing uh, is hopefully going to be vetted for major flaws. Um, so hopefully we don't run into those problems. Um, but I think for folks who are interested or who have questions about this, it is important to go to a diabetes center where they have someone who does understand some of the risks and benefits of these systems. Um, so you sh certainly shouldn't be afraid uh, to seek out help in these situations. And uh, frequently, uh, there will be other patients potentially, uh, especially in an endocrine practice, who may be using these devices. Um, and it's a very supportive community. So I think it is nice to have, uh, have resources from others using it. And I think from providers who have a little bit more understanding of these devices. Because everything is iterated rather rapidly, um, there is always the possibility that something gets introduced into the code, which is uh, potentially problematic. Uh, so one has to keep apprised of what changes are out there. Um, and then because people can make their own custom versions, folks might say, well, I want, you know, Tim or Alan's version of the program. And again, those may not be vetted in the same way as commercial systems. So it is a benefit of the system that you can make changes rapidly. Uh, but it is also a potential risk because anytime you can make changes rapidly, uh, you can also generate problems rapidly.